Hey, welcome back to the Jet Jet Show. Uh, this is this is a recording that I'm doing late at night, and I'm adding this onto a recording that I I did basically about a month ago. I mentioned that I was going to cover the uh, breakdown for the blending molds and all that for the Evangelion picture. Uh, so here it is, and uh, basically I got a question um by Mr. Ching Hao. Um, he asked. Uh, thanks for the tutorial. One question though, are there any benefits to changing the sketch layer to multiply versus placing the line art layer on top of the sketch? Thanks. So that is a really good question because that is actually something that's been on my mind when I was uh, working on this drawing. So what he's talking about is why am I fin doing the finished line art underneath the sketch? Why am I not doing it on top? And are there any benefits to it? First of all, let's just clarify. I basically copied a drawing, a pre-existing drawing, um, that had a background on it. So like this is a white background. It's just a flat picture. If you scan up a drawing, you have a completely uh, opaque um, background. You, you don't have just lines floating by itself. And that's something that will make sense once you start playing with layers and stuff. What I did was basically I set that layer to multiply um, and I started um, inking it from underneath. He actually got it right. I normally draw over the drawing, but in this case, for the purpose of example, um, I, I sketched, I inked underneath. This technique would also come in handy if you're happy with your lines and you don't need to ink them anymore, you just want to color it. So you just want to color your sketch and you want it to have these as your lines. Um, that, that would really be helpful for a lot more traditional artists who finish who finish their sketches on paper. All you need to do is set your, your layer to multiply and then basically you can see through it. What are the benefits of having your, your inks on, on the top? Okay, so let's just look at the lines. If you notice, the lines are slightly red and in order to manipulate the colors um, more easily, you want to have it at on normal. Because if you're set to multiply, uh, multiply is what it does is basically it's bleeding through all the layers underneath. So this this layer right here is the lines, and all these are your colors underneath. And if I were to set it to multiply, it would turn black. You see? So and if I tried to multi um, change the color of it, I'm gonna try to change the color. You wouldn't see the change. The color is red, but it turned black because it's bleeding through all of these layers, doubling the colors. Um, getting darker uh, with each layer whereas if you set it to multi uh, normal um, it's it's a flat color over the over the drawing so look it's it's perfectly blue exactly the color that I wanted so if I set it to multiply it bleeds through all the colors underneath and it gets darker and so you don't get a true sense of your color if you're trying to man manipulate it so if I wanted to change that color I'm like I want it to be uh, this color and you're like oh that color is kind of dark I guess I have to lighten it up a bit if you lighten it up to get it to where you want it um, it starts to change the actual color of that layer because you're not seeing it in its true form you're seeing it under the uh, setting of multiply and that is why it's nice to have it on set to, to normal if it was set to normal whatever color you choose that's the color you're gonna get now if you did have if you if you had a drawing with the white background because you scanned it up and you had it set to multiply you can change the uh, the color uh, of this line if you lighten up the value so you open it up and then you wanted to change it but it's bleeding through everything so it's hard to see the difference you'd have to raise your lightness up lift up your saturation and you would kind of get that effect as well see how the lines turning red and being able to change your lines um, to another color other than black um, brings more color into your drawing. Um, it, it also blends your drawing like with the colors underneath a little better. This works especially well with painterly styled illustrations as opposed to more graphic, thick, black, comic-y lines. I know when studying traditional painting, we sketched our rough drafts a lot in red hues like burnt umber, browns, uh, sometimes even blues. This is done, um, from my experience anyway, because black tends to muddy up your painting when you're adding colors on top 
um, black will start mixing in with the colors you're using so it starts turning things gray and desaturated. And by using colors like reds and blues, um, it'll help keep that life in your painting. And this is the kind of effect that I'm trying to translate over into the digital world. So for example, if I wanted to paint this purple over this line, look what happens. So I did, I color dropped, I color picked this purple, and I'm going to paint over that line. See what happens? It's, it's multiplying. You're taking this color, but since your line is, uh, your layer is set to multiply and you click this area, it's, it's not the true color you're getting unless you turn that layer off, you get normal. So instead, if you were set to normal and you take this color again and then paint it over, then it would work. But that's actually a technique that's kind of flawed. You wouldn't paint the colors over your lines on the line layer. You can't just create another layer over it and just paint those li lines uh, away like that, which is what I, I do uh, to finish my illustrations off. But uh, a quick and easy way to get rid of your lines is uh, clicking on this lock transparency pixel tool right here, button. Um, click it, click the um, color you want. So the neighboring color and just paint over it like this. What you're seeing is not a big old blotch of orange painting over that uh, section. You're, I'm only actually painting over the line. That's what lock transparent pixel does. You're only painting on what's on that layer. And what's on this layer is, is line. That's all there is. So if there's only just line, um, that that's the only area that this paint's gonna touch. A better way to see that example is if I were to use the color white, um, it's probably gonna be a better example. And I'm gonna paint over those lines. Look what happens. I'm only touching the lines. So now I'm just, I'm changing those lines into white. And if you know how to work it, it this can be really, really handy. So here's how I would use that, um, this function. I would basically click the color adjacent or next to that line I would color pick it like this holding option color pick it and just painting that line like this now I'm not painting over the um, the drawing I'm just painting over the lines because it's, it's set to lock and it gets rid of that color it only gets rid of that, that, that I mean it gets rid of the line and it only gets rid of the line if you're using the correct color all right, so if I were to use red, the line's still there. I didn't erase it. See, I'm painting it red now, but I, I wanted to match the color underneath so I could blend away the, the lines. You guys getting it? Hope you guys are. And if I wanted to get rid of this, and I'm using a mouse by the way, guys. And then say if I wanted to blend this area out, I pick this color and then I blend it out like this. If I want to get rid of this line, I take the orange and I blend it out like this. But I wouldn't go all the way in. See, see that? I would have to select the purple and just work your drawing all the way through like that. Um, it's just a really quick and easy way of, of getting rid of your lines. But be careful because you risk losing the energy in your drawing. If you get rid of all your all of your lines, um, you risk uh, getting rid of the energy. If your line art is pretty good, but if you're going for more of a painterly style, uh, that this might be a very uh, useful technique. Another thing to mention is this is a technique of painting away your lines without actually erasing your lines so that it retains the information in case you needed to go back and see how the sketch look. You can always just sketch back a darker value to get that line back. All right, to send to drive the message home, this is the last point. Again, if the layer was set to multiply, look what happens. I want to basically take this color and I want to basically blend that line out. And I have the line, and I'm only painting on the lines because it's locked transparent. I'm gonna click this color, I'm gonna paint on it. It didn't work. It didn't work. Why didn't it work? Because you're taking this color, painting over it that line is set to multiply. So the color you, that you use is now being multiplied. Um, you, you can get a pretty good effect if you didn't want to get rid of your lines completely. You see, it leaves the line semi there because it's set to multiply. But then the problem you have to deal with now is basically 
knowing the true color you kind of have to basically predict the color while we're here let's talk a little bit about um uh picking the color that's on the layer and not the multiplied color so when i when i when i color pick this area i'm gonna get black right you're gonna see because it's black pick it i get black but in reality it's not black it's only black because it's set to multiply if i were to set to normal it's actually red that's the color i chose so or really um, dark brown if i were set to multiply i don't want the black i want the red the line's red and we're seeing black how do we how do we get around that without having to switch out to normal selecting it to get around that to get around that you would come over here to the eyedrop tool button and then set it to current layer and watch what happens see it's not black it's it's brown I mean it's, it's really difficult to see but it's actually brown this is the color I'm getting see? it's not pitch black see that again so I'm on the line layer and I'm going to eye, eyedropper tool I'm going to go to all layers this basically samples colors from all the layer the layers so what you see is what you get I'm going to color pick this color and I get black so I'm just going to go to the layer above it and prove that it's black well it's really dark dark color it's not completely black but it's dark okay so let's look at it again I'm going to I'm going to come over here eyedrop tool turn on your current layer and I want to pick it again and it's not black so that's just a quick way if you don't want to go back and switch out your multiply lines for some reason um, you'll figure out what to do with it when the when the time comes so yeah that that was actually a really good question and it's and it was bugging me a bit and it, it was nice to see that actually uh, people were actually paying attention to that so I hope that get, I hope that wasn't too confusing because I think I confused myself a little bit I say a lot of things and it's hard sometimes to keep track of what I'm actually saying. So um hope that helped you guys. Thanks a lot for watching. You guys take care and as always, peace.